I'm writing up a document. <laughs> I'm writing up documentation. It will be ready by next week. Nice. Thanks, Emily. That was awesome. All right. Can everybody hear me and see my screen? Yep. I can't see. I can't see. Okay. Yep. Um, so Dusty's been working long, hard hours on um, unifying our agent search and results. And um, we're looking at tests right now where the results of that work sit. And I want to demonstrate them to you today before they get pushed to production. So going forward, once this happens, um, there will be one place to search for agents and that's here in the search agents, which is what we're looking at. And the form is pretty simplified now. And I wanna point out one thing and that is this search will search everything. So when I search Grinnell here, I get people who have relationships to someone named Grinnell um, so it might not be the best place to search if you are looking for specific people. Um, probably the name is what you want. Um, when you search in the name field, you get people who have that in their name. So it, it narrows down your list of results quite significantly. But you can also see that um, this works differently than the agent's search now and you see the agents all in um, a bunch of rows with columns with data there. The data is kind of chunked together by what it is. So names, identifiers, relationships, addresses. Um, and hopefully that allows you to you know make better comparisons of people when you uh, get your search results. So I am then gonna move on to looking at a person. When you select Joseph Grinnell, you get their agent page. And the agent page is mostly the same as it currently is. There's a few things that are different. So now we have this status icon um, for agents that are being managed by someone you can add a verification that gives a little star here and also makes it a little more challenging to edit. So it makes people aware that somebody cares about this person um, and is managing their data. Uh, you can also copy the stable identifier, which is the URL associated with Joseph Grinnell. Um, we have the comment report bad data as usual, um, and then you can get to edit from here. The one new thing about this agent page is we have a new agent attribute called profile, which is a place for putting a person or organization's bio or profile information. So it's going to appear at the top and you can see this one has a nice long write up from MVZ. Um, below that, everything else is, is kind of the same at this point. So now we'll take a look at editing because it definitely looks different. So now when you edit an agent, you have the same kind of information at the top, some data quality alerts, they're collecting summary and media associated with them. And then you have your, your add section. So this is where you could add new attributes about the agent if that's what you came to do. Um, and then you can see the existing attributes. And these are also kind of chunked together by what they are. So addresses, events, identifiers, names, other, which includes the profile and remarks and curatorial remarks would be here too. And then relationships. So um, current data in the agents are getting migrated to this. It means that every bit of data about an agent um, can have begin and end dates, a related agent, a determiner and a date, and a method of determination and remarks. So it allows you to um, 
to provide information about a person doing something um, over a period of time, which is, uh, I think, an improvement, hopefully. And um, the other thing about the new agent model is that this preferred name no longer has to be unique across the agent table. So we could have two Joseph Grinnells. Um, hopefully they would be two different people, um, but it makes it possible for people to create duplicates. Um, so creating new agents um, should be taken with care because you wanna make sure you're not doing that as much as possible. We still have ways for marking agents as duplicates. So um, it's not the end of the world if it happens, but we prefer for it not to happen um, from the beginning. Teresa, how does that work with bulk loading data? How does the bulk loader distinguish between agents if they have the same name? So um, that is part of the uh, the agent stable identifier or the URL associated with the agent. When there are people that have the same name, and it's not necessarily just their preferred name, um, if two people have the same name anywhere in their names, um, it's going to pop up if you try to bulk load using that name and say, I don't know which person you want. And the way you distinguish is by using the, um, the URL for the agent that you want. You can also use the Wikidata identifier, the ORCID ID, um, and Arctos username, because those things should also be um, unique across Arctos. Although I did discover that the username might not be because um, it depends on how closely it actually matches an AKA somewhere. So, um, but for the most part, I think using a username will work as a unique name. Thanks. Uh -huh. So, Teresa, so uh, do we still have agents under the tools directory? How do you create a new agent? Is that under still under tools or what do you? No, you can see when you, uh, when you're looking at the agent, um, I mean the agent search, sorry. Let's go back over to the agent search. There's right here, create a person. Uh, create person, okay. Or so nothing's agent. now under tools directory for agents, is that right? Correct, those uh -huh. things will be gone. Okay. Yeah, and so this also means that uh, the public search and the, you know, editor search are the same screen now. Right. Okay, cool. But the, if we do operator manage, that's still under tools? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. still a separate thing. So does, uh, do you see different things if you're logged in versus as a public user or is it pretty much? Yes. Yeah, so I was also going to um, really quickly show you. So one of the, the other things that happens because of this change is that instead of all of the agent code tables that we have now, we only have one um, for all the different kinds of things that you might um, associate with an agent. Um, so that gets simplified, but on each one of these, sorry if I'm making you guys sick, on each one of these, um, it tells you if it's public or not. Okay. So certain attributes would not be public um, and it's the same as it was before. Teresa, could you show that same public private uh, on the edit form page? Because that's also a new feature of the edit page. If you go back to uh, the edit uh, uh, an agent, yeah, scroll down a little. Oh yeah, you'll well, see you that there's see these icons now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are those are we we were discussing this in the DEI committee. So those that's supposed to be people. Is that so what that public. means? Okay. Yeah, public. Like and then the little those. spy guy. It, oh, it, I was wondering what that was. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, oh, well, Which he doesn't Grinnell have any, doesn't have any not yeah, private. Yeah, but if, if there's a private one, then it, it's supposed to be a little spy. Now, we had a little, you know, questions about if you could tell those or if you're dating yourself. But anyways, the, they do look different. Is, but is there a way we could... Page. Is there a way we could put like public private as like text in like if you, even if you hover over the icon or something because it, I, it does. I didn't know there there's a pop up if you hover oh good yeah see okay 
Yeah, well, I don't know if you can see the pop-up. Yeah, we can well, see it. Yeah, yeah we can it see says it. It's public information. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, there, there's a there's a hover. Uh, and to change that to private, what would you do in the edit? You can't. You would, that, you would, that, they're either Arcos public default. or private based upon what they are. Right. You would just choose a different um, attribute then. I see. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to leave a private remark, then choose curatorial, for instance. If you want to choose, a, if you want to leave a public remark, then choose uh, either profile or remarks, I believe. Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. I have one other quick question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, sorry. Could you explain what's the related agent for, for those attributes? I don't see how we use that. So um, for some of these, it's probably not that important. Um, although, you know, for instance, this one, if we had an agent that was a Wikipedia, they, they could be there. Um, but especially for the relationships and the, um, well, sp specifically the relationships, your related agent is the, the agent that the relationship is being formed with, just like we used to have before. Okay. But you can also, okay. it, it also makes it nice because you can, in an address, add the, um, employer or the, you know, university where the address is as a related agent if you want um, so it just allows you that flexibility the ones where it's required are the relationships gotcha thanks and quick question teresa um yeah. do we still have the ability to toggle between the agent page and the operator manage page um with this form because under identifiers, I think there was a used to be a way to look in uh, to toggle over to the the operator account. Yeah, which that is not a thing on this anymore, and maybe it's something we can think about. So that is going to function differently now. Instead of on the agent adding the username, you associate the username with the agent. So I think Dusty. I don't know, you can speak to this, but we can probably still have that somehow, maybe. Um, yeah, I thought I put a link in. If I didn't, I will. Yeah, if it's here, I don't know where it is. It'll cool. be there. Thank you. Okay. Teresa, this is can, really you neat. <clears throat> can you scroll down to uh, associated agents? Yeah, this is really neat. Um, keep or go up a little, maybe. Or... I think it was down below. Yeah, down below. Okay. Okay, so I feel like in the issue, there was some possibility of maybe overwriting um, information like in free text for a related agent. It seems like that went away. So um, this is kind of a, I was talking with Dusty about this this morning because um the way the related agents are set up right now is each one of these is an individual kind of attribute, right? Like where you, um, I'm going to go up here to edit so you can see them. If I, if I was picking, if I wanted to make a new relationship, I would pick one of these things. Um, but I sort of asked maybe what we should be doing. And I set this up uh, where you just pick relationship and then the value is the type of relationship so that all you have to do is add the related agent. That's good. I like that. So um, we probably need to work out a couple of things to make it work that way instead, but I feel like that would be easier. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> but yeah, this um, is awesome. Thank you. Go ahead. I was just saying this looks great. Thank you. And I think the that... other um, kind of change that I have suggested and maybe we can make before we actually implement this has to do with um, birth, death and whatever. So Dusty had originally set this up as you pick event and then you pick one of the old terms that we used to have. Um, but I said, well, why, why should we do that? Let's just have this thing um, called life dates. And then you say this person is either living dead or I don't know for sure. And then the dates are birth and death right here. Um, and that way there's only one thing to do. And if all you have is the the end date, then that's what you put. Um, you don't have to put them both. Um, 
So, and that would get rid of all these other, um, you know, things that people get mixed up right now anyway. So that sounds good, but also one of the things that would be great since we're starting to add in um, organizations and even identifiers into the agent table um, that sort of limits the ability to use alive or dead if you've got an organization or a, or an identifier, um, an issuer of something. So it, could we expand that vocabulary or make it a little bit more generic, so like status dates or something like that, and have a variety of options that would include um, non individual or non-person entities? Yeah, and I was thinking about that as well. And so, yes, we could either, you know, change that term up to make it more generic um, and have options of like um, established or um, or operating or operational or something for the alive organizations. Um, I also kind of considered like maybe it really should be two different attributes, um, one for the people and one for the organizations. Um, but I don't know if that's necessary or not. But yes, we could add terms there. Well, I, I hesitate to change something that's pretty well established in the humanities of birth and death dates. Also, oftentimes I have metadata that's separate for birth and death dates. I have different places. I have different sources of information. So I may have gotten the birth date from one document, but the death date from another. So it it, it is really kind of... But, but that Even can just, go it, into method for... Well, you know. I know, but they're separate. And the, so that means I now have to parse through. And again, I just hesitate to move away from established um, conventions, metadata standards already set in other humanities. So so I kind of, I you know, that just needs more discussion. I understand uh, the, the, the need to streamline, but I, I think this goes away from uh, metadata standards. But maybe not accepted. streamline, but add. So like what, what Tracy was saying earlier, if it's a person, then you have all, the, you have whatever data you need to to reflect that, but we need to add some values that would reflect organizational entities or issuing identifiers, because the, right now we don't really have a way to indicate their status other than using alive or dead, which doesn't make sense from an organization standpoint. There was an issue a year or two ago, and it was agreed that using those does in fact make sense, and that's what the cultural people wanted to do. Yeah, but like I said, we have different um, metadata around birth and death dates. And so that's why having those smooshed together actually kind of uh, is a denormalization, actually. Uh, I, so don't... I, I meant a different set of terms for persons and non persons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah We're talking about right. a bunch of different I... things at the same time. Yeah, exactly. We are talking about two different things. So I, I'm fine with. Um, making it uh adding something that's more appropriate for the entities uh versus a, a person i'm just saying the birth and death i i do understand about the living and you know there there's some that's always been a little bit you know squirrely but um birth and death dates are kind of a, a thing also like i said it, um having having those separated uh could be advantageous because there's other things that we can do with that too. But just, it just requires more discussion. I think this framework lets us, you know, adopt something that's uh, reasonable in the end. Yeah, this is a huge improvement. It's really cool what additional information we can add. So thanks. Yeah. I agree. Are there any uh, other any specific questions about the new form uh, and, and new interface that's going to go live on Monday? Um, getting back to the bulk loader question. So if you, um, is it just one column? So you need to put the preferred name or the agent ID in the same column or do you yes. have to separate? You, yeah. Okay. You just put it in the normal place where you would, you know, now just put preferred name. It, yeah. Essentially an expansion of that is it needs a piece of unique information to select an agent. Otherwise you're going to get an error. So if you've got 27 Carlos Cicero's go give you something that you recognize and use that when you're bulk loading. Right, or you no, can I, just, yeah. or you I can get, use the agent ID. The agent ID is the 
sort of built in always unique option. Right, I get that. I was just wondering, because like with locality ID, that's in a separate column from the locality, for example. So yeah, okay. And oh. can we just use the number or do we need the whole URL? Uh, I think just the number will work until somebody starts putting numbers in agents for some reason. Great question. Thanks. Is the URL I'm assuming is um is a persistent URL with agent ID? Yep. Um unless they get merged or something. It's persistent. Okay. It's, it's, could we add the agent ID to one of the um attributes for an agent? So it's it's obvious that it's there and, and you know, when when a form asks for an agent ID, sometimes people don't know to look up at the URL. It just you know I is, think the big button gets at that. Big button. Yeah. Um, when you look at an agent page, this guy right here. Okay. We'll gotcha. let you copy that ID. Okay. It just when you're looking at the actual page, unless you look up from the page and look at to the URL, you don't know what the agent ID is. But yeah, I mean, I didn't know if it, that could be added as an identifier since it's an Arctos assigned value. We don't, and it, you know, if it, whether it's stable or not, that's the question. Yeah, probably file an issue. Okay. Um, any other questions? So I think uh, one last thing I would like to point out with this is um, now it will be very easy for people to create duplicate agents. Um, when you're manually creating an agent, it's kind of the same process as before, and you will get messages that say, hey, um, this looks like a name that already exists in Arctos. Are you sure it's what you want to do? Um, the one place where it can go horribly wrong is bulk loading agents um, because it doesn't really do that. So we have the pre-bulk loader so you can check your names before you decide to bulk update or add a bunch of agents. But um, it would be very easy for somebody to just load a bunch of duplicates through that agent bulk load tool. So um, I think we, we might want to look at who has access to that tool and whether we need um, two levels of permission for managing agents um, and that there's a very few that can use the bulk load tool. Um, I'll be filing an issue about that, but I just want everybody to think about it. Can we just force that through with the name checker before it goes in? That's what the pre-bulk loader does. It checks everything and then offers you up all kinds of, you know, lists of names that it might match or exact matches and things like that. Um, so if you run your, your names through the pre-bulk loader first, and then, you know, weed them out and do the right thing and then load agents, you should be fine. Um, it's just possible to not do that, right? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm asking. Like, can, should we be considering making that you have to do that before you load? load but load. I don't know how, so we, Dusty and I talked about this as well. Like, how could he enforce that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's possible, really. Well, no, well, if like, it was like physically integrated, the mm -hmm. button you click to bulk load goes to the pre-bulk loader and checks those names. But then it comes back with errors. And some of them are not, some of them look like matches, but they're not. So you do want to load that thing. Right. It, it's right. just, there. it's a complicated process. Yeah. Because names are complicated. Mm. Fully understand that. <laughs> but, cur but currently, when you say you know you want to mark everything to or you want to put it through the load your records, it does a pre-check. And you know, um, could it be that could there be another pre-check step where it just goes through the pre-bulk loader and says, you know, notice there are some issues here, and then would check these records and reload? Or you know, could we add? Could we incorporate? Like I think this is what Andy's saying. Could we incorporate some of the bulk load, pre bulk loader tools into the steps that everybody uses for the bulk loader? So I mean, we're 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 talking about the agent bulk loader. Sorry, um, 
you know, not just records or whatever. So I don't know how many people actually load agents in this way. Um, but you can see, like, I've put things here in the pre-bulk loader um, in test, and it'll offer me up things like, um, you know, if you're going to add these people, they should have a first and a last name because all I did was load preferred names. Um, it'll it'll tell me, oh, I think this might be a duplicate or this is an exact match to a preferred name or a match to somebody's last name. Um, and then I can take that information and do whatever I want with it, because maybe it is an exact match for somebody's preferred name, but I know it's not the same person. So I want to add a second agent, you know, with the same preferred name. Um, I just don't know how we could deal with that in the actual agent bulk loader without stopping the load from happening, which means I could never load the name, if that makes any sense. Also, it's just a lot more sort of computational and effort to put into place for, I believe, an action that doesn't happen with a high frequency and the and the kind of user who's going to go this route is probably going to have a lot of other permissions too. So whatever we put into place, they'll be able to figure out how to go get around it. So I, it does seem like maybe permissions is the place to exert some kind of uh, quality control on this because the, the user who's going to go this route is going to be pretty sophisticated and should be able to, you know, uh, read directions, handle the pre-bulk loading um, uh, 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 results, and do something about it, like either force through them, or force create these, you know, uh, agents, or delete them because maybe they they realize, oh, you know, guy already exists, I missed it in my search or whatever. So um, I I don't know if there was a an issue filed for this. Yet, I think you mentioned you're going to, but we can discuss it further there. But that, to me, it, the um, controlling permission seems the, like the right place to deal with that. But yeah, concerns are noted. And the, uh, so if people complain about the big red box uh, to when you're creating agents even one by one, that's kind of what that's for, too. Yeah, that, that form really doesn't change. Too. So... Uh, the committee went through the big red box and we determined that uh, it actually is full of very helpful information and uh, we could hear Dusty in the back of our heads with every single line. Thanks, yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> take it as a compliment. All right. <laughs> Are there any other questions? I'm going to stop the recording so we can get back to our agenda. Okay. Yeah, that was great. Thanks.